thing that we're doing this. I think yeah. it's ever nice to be Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, this is, let's see, the second Friday of the month, which means it's time for Food Addiction Friday, hosted by Dr. Joan Iflin. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to see you, Dr. Iflin. I am so delighted to be here. I think this is a wonderful opportunity to how people stop suffering from processed food. So I'm super grateful to you. Well, I cannot wait. So I know you have a lot of guests on today. So I am going to change the mode to gallery mode and take myself mm -hmm. off screen and you can take it away. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am indeed Dr. Joan Ifland, and I'm very, very happy to be here with you today. I have with me a group of people from the Addiction Reset community who have been using a plant-based food plan to recover from processed food addiction. And a lot of people for a lot of years said that you couldn't do that. Chance you had to, it's just so much. Oh, um, um, it's not frozen for me. Okay. Um, that you, you, that, uh, plant-based plans are too high in carbs to work for recovery from processed food addiction. And we are here to say that is so obviously not true. Brenda and Heather and Jamie and Kathy are all going to share their experiences with putting diseases into remission on a plant-based food plan using a food addiction recovery approach. So I hope every listener to, to this is just being filled with hope. I know we were among the first, maybe for a while, we were the only addiction, food addiction re recovery outfit that welcomed plant-based people with open arms. And then I think when other practitioners saw that we were being just wildly successful with it, uh, they've opened their practices as well. Here's the big lesson. It's the processed foods that cause illness. I have a lot of research on that exact question, and it's growing all the time. There's a, it's called a prospective cohort study, and all it just means is they take data from, and this is in France, 109,000 pe people. They waited, I think it's been seven or eight years now, and they now they're correlating. The data they took was, what are you eating? And now they're seeing what kinds of diseases show up in which people eating what foods. Processed foods are causing disease. So they, in the base data, the people who are eating the most processed foods are having the most disease experiences. It's not the food plan, it's the processed foods. And we even know the mechanisms by which processed foods create disease. Processed foods are inflammatory. And when a cell is inflamed, it has a very hard time working. Processed foods create cell level disease in eight different ways, including mitochondria dysfunction. And mitochondria is the powerhouse of every, every cell. And when that little mitochondria is not working, it means that the cell is not working and then you, you become sick uh, in a lot of different ways. So I think what you're gonna be really excited about today is that as we ask Brenda and Kathy and Heather and Jamie to share their stories, you're going to hear a broad range of illnesses that have gone away in recovery. This is, um, I think a big part of it, of course, is that it's happening inside the addiction reset community. We are slightly pivoting the arc, the addiction reset community to become the remission optimistic community. Because over the years, yes, yes, we've been focused on remission of this terrible addiction. But what's happening over here on the side is that all these other diseases are going away. So finally, last year, I started to say to myself, why don't we talk to people about the diseases that are going into remission and not worry so much about uh, 
all the ins and outs of recovering from a severe addiction. So today we're going to be emphasizing remission. Remission of, I, I think just sit down and be prepared to be very surprised and very, very hopeful. Because I know you're on the screen today, but you are surrounded by people who are now coming down with, they're being diagnosed with diet-related diseases. It's uh, inevitable. 88% of Americans have high triglycerides, blood pressure, blood glucose, cholesterol, or weight. 88%. And 83% of Americans are overweight or obese. And Americans are eating 73% of their food in processed foods, which are not nourishing. So on top of the toxic effects of the processed foods themselves, a lot of millions of people are suffering from malnourishment. So you have inflammation from the processed foods themselves. You have malnourishment. And then processed foods create leaky gut. So partially digested foods are leaking out into the bloodstream. They don't belong there. The immune system wears itself out going after them. And they aggravate, like they aggravate membranes. So on top of processed foods being inflammatory, now you have partially digested foods, like aggravating your joints. And immune function is then suppressed. And we live in a very stressful culture. So if you watch any of the streaming services, uh, the violence and the meanness, the cruelty in that programming just increases all the time. When your brain is experiencing stress, a very dangerous thing is happening in your body. The blood flow is being diverted to your muscles. Well, if that happens once a year, that's not a big deal. But when it happens all day long, every day, the rest of your body is not getting blood flow, which means that if there's a little infection over there or a few cancer cells, your immune system, which is carried by your blood flow, is not reaching those spots. So chronic infections, even we're having a dramatic rise in cancer diagnoses, this is all explainable by processed foods and stress. So in the ARC, in the Addiction Reset Community, we go to great lengths to resolve stress. It's a very gentle community. It's a very patient community. It's very science-based. So people get explanations of what's happening to them, especially for why their illnesses and their distress and their pain is not their fault. This is not your fault. Not the weight gain, not the disease, not the depression, not the fatigue. It's not your fault. Uh, but until you get the processed foods out of your diet, it's not going to go away. And you can do all the childhood therapy in the world, um, and you will still be in pain at the end of it if you're still using these inflammatory processed foods in your diet. So let's start going around and get this incredible news. What I'm gonna ask is for each one of these four lovely, incredible people just to share their story. And then um, I think that we will have access to questions. So if you have questions about how we did this, um, ask away. So I'm gonna to go to the top left of my screen to Brenda M. Brenda M, tell us your story. Well, thank you. Um, so I first learned about a whole food plant-based diet through Dr. Dean Ornish. Um, he and his wife were being interviewed on Super Soul Sunday by Oprah. And um, I was so intrigued. You know, I I heard him talk about how a whole food plant-based way of eating can actually prevent and in some cases reverse heart disease mm -hmm. and so many so many other things and i thought wow that's fantastic and that's so good for them you know for all the people who can do this i can't i thought to myself but i thought so good for all of them and 
even though I didn't think it was possible for me, I was intrigued enough that I continued to learn about it, continue to do research about it and kind of immerse myself into, you know, gaining more knowledge about plant-based eating over the next year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately there was really a myriad of reasons why I made the switch. Um, you know, one of which was I was my BMI, my body mass index was at the base of uh, obesity. Mm -hmm. And I just could not for the life of me figure out how to lose weight. Um, mm -hmm. No diets were working for me. You know, it just wasn't going well in any other area. And then the month before I made the switch, I started having chest pains at rest three times during one month. Oh, that dear. was very alarming to me. And um, I just knew I had to do what I could to learn more about it and to get started. So I did that. I took the plunge and um, my BMI came down to an optimal range. Yay. My cholesterol, which was one point below needing medication, came down to an optimal range. Yay. You know, the, the chest pain ceased. My daughter, who was 12 at the time, also made the switch with me. Her debilitating menstrual cramps stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, there was just so many things. Her acne cleared up, you know, and um, I haven't looked back since. Yay. I, I Yay. just love it. <laughs> what did you I will mean? say chef aj has been a huge part of my journey and yes, i have thank you i didn't know i appreciate that <laughs> well, thank you chef AJ. <laughs> tell us what you eat in a typical day brenda so i start my day with oatmeal and fruit mm -hmm. and um, then I have a lot of soups of salads. Um, I enjoy a lot of steamed vegetables, um, legumes, you know, like lentils, the beans, stuff like that. And then just hey. trying to incorporate as many vegetables as possible. All right. All right. And it's delicious, isn't it? It is. Yes. It is. One of the things that people don't understand when you go plant-based, people so often think that we're depriving ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the thing is when you're, when your gut, when the microbiome is used to eating double cheeseburgers, that's what your body craves, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you give that stuff up and you start eating healthy, that is the food that you crave, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I try to tell people all the time, I love what I eat. You know, I do not feel depraved, deprived, yes. Yes. you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it, it takes, you know, a few weeks to get there, but it's so worth it. Yes. It's surprising how little time it takes to start getting massive benefits, Absolutely. Massive life changing, life liberating. Uh, processed foods and especially processed food addiction are like be living in a prison. And the food industry has created this idea that, oh, the, this is pleasure. Oh, you're going to be giving up pleasure. But when you get to the other side of it and your brain doesn't hurt anymore and the brain fog has lifted and you get to think about what you want to think about and the cravings are gone, then yeah. you realize that you've been in a hidden prison. Yes. Did you feel that way? I could go on and on and on about the benefits, but I want to give everybody else a chance to speak. All right. <laughs> Heather, Heather, tell us your story. First Heather, of all, the way, I... Heather is the director of the Addiction Reset community at Food Addiction Reset. Sorry, go ahead, Heather. It's super exciting to be on here. I just wanted to say that I am fangirling right now because I love Chef AJ. I watch her show all every day, all the time. Amazing. Um, Thank you. My, my journey was a bit different. I have been probably almost on every food plan imaginable. And I have to say, you know, I've, I've struggled with food addiction. I thought it was an eating disorder. That's the way I was diagnosed many years ago. Um, had done so many different things. And I came into the arc and it just stopped the binging and the bulimia and all the other stuff. 
but I was still having a bit of an issue with health problems. And I kept feeling like I was overeating and I was overeating all the time. So I fortunately got my blood work done every six months. And there was a particular thing that my doctor found to um, particular things on my blood work that was concerning so much to the point where she sent me to a hematologist and that scared the mess out of me. Now, just so happened, I had changed my eating plan three months before to whole food plant-based. And I was listening to Jamie's interview in the arc about her experience and her journey and I remember because I was I was doing low carb keto, done carnivore, all that stuff. And I was especially overeating on the weekend. And I was listening to her interview. And I remember she talked about how she couldn't eat oil if she, you know, she had carbs and all of that. And I looked down and I was pouring like this bottle of olive oil all over my vegetables. And I didn't realize every week this pan was getting larger and larger but it was oh. low carb. Oh. and I said wait a minute what because I always blame the starches the fruit the carbs never looked at olive oil or animal fat or fats or whatever but when I started to pay attention and and log what I was overeating it was when I had these these fats in my mm -hmm. meal plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I spoke with um spoke with Jamie. She told me about her journey. It was so similar to mine. And it was scary. I was like, I can't eat yams. I can't eat starches. I can't eat fruit. Oh my goodness. I'm going to gain weight. And sure enough, I just switched over and my blood work, everything cleared up. I didn't realize I had gout. My ferritin mm -hmm. levels were super high. My white blood cell count was really low. I had anemia and I was eating all this red meat and still had anemia. Mm. And I, I was able to eat portioned meals without overeating of starches and fruit. Charles. And, and I just felt really, really satiated and happy and was able to not you know, overeat on it. It just blew my mind. So it's two years this month that I've been on this lifestyle. And in the past, I had tried um, to be vegan or whole food plant-based. I did high raw and all those diets, but I didn't realize that I had processed food in mm. the food plan. Mm -hmm. And I had blamed it on, uh, it, you know, yams or starches or fruit. It's, all, it's always carbs. Carbs are demonized. It's the carbs. But it was the processed food. Right. So now I just eat whole foods, you know, and I don't add any oil. And I don't, I have fat, but I don't add oil or outside extra fat. And I, I'm doing great. I, I'm doing great. And there was an added bonus of uh, weight loss that I wasn't looking for that that happened. I couldn't believe it. But the main thing is I don't have that obsessing and binging mm -hmm. and overeating. Mm -hmm. I eat tons of fiber. I've always had digestive issues. I didn't think I could eat the certain things that I could eat that I can. I eat now. It's it's amazing. Just been amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I'm just so grateful for your story. Um, people can, you know, even after, after they get onto a plant-based food plan, they can uh, experiment and empower themselves to figure out what foods work best for them. I'm just so grateful that you never gave up. You know, sometimes the medical professional will say, Oh, you're going to have to live with this. Oh, you just have a touchy stomach. You know, they told me, oh, you just have twitchy lungs. You're going to have asthma the rest of your life. None of that's true. None of that's true. How do you think being in the ARC helped you get uh, oh. to this place? First of all, it was during reset week when I switched over to whole food plant-based. I mean, I went from keto over to whole food plant-based and we have something called reset week, which is at home rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And reset week is fabulous. 
And this is when I did it during that week. And okay. I would not have been able to do it without the art. There's no way. And it was like a duck to water. And that's how I also knew that this food plan was best for me because I didn't even have withdrawal when I switched over to whole food mm-hmm. plant based. I it that's mind blowing. So I've had withdrawal on every other food plan. So just I just felt amazing. But yes, couldn't have done it without the arc. And without the arc, I wouldn't have met you, Joan, because initially I feel like you pulled me into the lifeboat as it is. Sure heard. And then really? you applauded when I went to you about, you know, can I speak with Jamie? Can I talk about the food plant thing? You said most definitely, yes, please do so. You've always yeah. been super supportive of that, of all food plans. I've loved that about you. And then I wouldn't have met Jamie. Well, I do know from my research that it is taking out the processed foods. Once you have clean foods, once you have foods that are designed for humans, uh, then your body will start to act like a healthy human body. Specifically, just name, like, if you don't mind, two or three things that you particularly like about the ARC that you use. Oh, my goodness. That is tough, Joan. <laughs> I'm going to say the community. Mm-hmm. The community is a kind, compassionate, supportive community. Even when I've come in and we we talk on chats over Zoom or we connect, there are days I didn't like myself and I wanted to give up on myself and mm-hmm. recovery. Mm-hmm. And none of the community let me oh, do that. I would come in and just talk about it and all this, and I feel this way, and they didn't let me. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate that. And I owe them a lot. Um, connection. I didn't realize, I always thought I was an introvert. Um, I want to be by myself, and that's not true. Without connection, I have the worst depression and anxiety. This I, is, I this is documented that. in the research. Isolation yes. leads to depression and anxiety. Yes, and then I have to say, because there's three C's, is collaboration. Mm-hmm. I come in with an issue. I talk about it. And it's like everybody goes to work on it (laughs) and they come back with suggestions and it's like, wow, I would have never thought of that. That's just so awesome. Lots and lots of good ideas. And just the people. I mean, I love Brenda M. I love Kathy F. and Jamie. I mean, just the people in the art have just been great people. people. Yeah. Yeah. Heather, thank you so much. Um, Heather, how long have you been in the ARC? Um, three and a half years, it'll be four years this year. Yeah. It My just keeps getting better and better. And better. Yeah, it is. I've, I've been in the ARC for five years and I keep, and the stuff that I'm getting now is the richest. It's almost like it was the deepest, the most uh, valuable, the things that are coming to the surface now. Uh, just keeps getting better and better. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. No, you're not. Something <laughs> better is coming. Heather, thank you. That was inspiring. I'm going around the clock here backwards. Jamie, tell us your story. How did you come to the ARC? How did you decide to be plant-based? And what have you gotten out of it? Um, I came to the ARC in, oh, it'll be three years this year. Um, and right in the middle, right as the pandemic was was hitting, uh, and I came to the ARC because I had seen Joan on a presentation um, that she had done. It was on YouTube all about food addiction. And I remember it made me stop in my tracks. Um, and I was, this was, I saw her, her video in 2017, 18. And uh, I remember I was, you know, several years into my own food recovery. I didn't know it was addiction recovery. I I really just thought it was, you know, maintaining weight loss. <laughs> yes. So, um, I had found my way into, into Joan's video and I was fascinated by it. Found my way from there into Chef AJ's, um, all of her work and all of the resources that she makes available through all of her network. 
And I just remember thinking that that it was there were there were these two missing pieces. There were the you know there was the addiction to the to the processed foods, which I was at the time I saw your video, Joan, was being mentored by an American Dietetics Association dietitian to okay. moderate processed foods. That it was okay, yeah. I could have them. Uh, uh, walking around with a twelve pound food monkey on my back. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Um, when I realized that, you know, now I really couldn't have them. And my body was telling me in all ways, I couldn't have them. Stop um, it. Stop it. Yeah. And so when I saw Chef AJ's video about, you know, how to make, how to optimize a plant-based meal plan, which I had tried years before and did not optimize and love the, love the way I felt, loved the, the, the science behind it but didn't understand how to really optimize it for, for my health. And so when I began to put both pieces together, I actually went to you, Joan, and said, Hey, you know, I work in healthcare. I've got an opportunity to do some grand rounds, you know, your, your research, your, you know, you wrote the textbook, literally let, let's do this. And my story and your research and we kind of partnered together and it was great. We got the word out. Uh, we obviously, you know, got on, on the radar of Chef AJ, which was such a joy to be working with you now, Chef AJ. And um, it's really a lot of fun to get the word out, not only about weight loss in in long-term successful weight loss, but yeah. I want to get the word out about long-term successful re um, remission of the addiction and long-term successful and joyful weight loss that can be found. Yes, and permanent, in permanent. Exactly. No more yo-yo dieting. Exactly. Yes. Have you had other things that have gone into remission? Yes. Uh, all of my emotional and some of the, you know, my mental fogginess, I had some emotional, um, you know, dysregulation that was happening with mood swings and other things. Those have gone away. My clarity and focus has just become crystal clear. Uh, yeah. I had, when I was trying to do the, the low carb keto side of the world, um, I even dabbled for a, a few days in the, in the carnivore side. And it just, I, I had all kinds of, you know, hypoglycemic responses, right. When I would okay. come in, crash okay. and, uh, I noticed that when I would eat oil on my food, I would overeat, um, oh. and I would overeat clean food, right. I just couldn't mm -hmm. eat it ad nauseum. And so, mm -hmm. um, when I took out, you know, when I kind of aligned to the whole food plant-based and, and went to the lower fat, um, my body just clicked with it. It, um, my cravings went away, my desire to do any kind of binging or even think about eating off plan, so to speak, amazing? went away. Uh, I didn't even uh, think about a plan. My body just, now my body just shows me pictures of what it needs. And I'll know like, Oh, you know, like a few weeks ago, it kept showing me pictures of oranges. And I'm like, well, that is gorgeous. very interesting. I'm like, I guess I'll have an art. I was starting to get sick. I was starting to get the, oh, a little bit of a sinus amazing. thing that was going around and my body started showing me pictures of foods high in vitamin C and zinc and iron and nutrients yeah. and my body craves those things. So it's so interesting that, you know, and when I give my body what it needs, it just responds. My, my, my periods regulated, uh, my, my performance, uh, in, you know, my physical fitness pursuits went up, my performance at work went up. Uh, my confidence in, in navigating the, the food world went up. People do think as was mentioned before that it's restrictive. It's, it's really, it's so, it's so liberal and liberating. Oh, that's, um, you know, that's, that's a, such a, a good point. I want to get into this with you, the variety. Yes. So people think, Oh, I'll have less variety. But what people don't realize is even though it's gussied up in different forms, it's sugar. It's flour, mm -hmm. it's excessive salt, it's dairy, it's processed fats, right. it's caffeine, it's food additives over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And when you get away from that, boom, 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 just like fireworks on your plate, there's so much color and there's so much texture and there's yeah. so many different shapes and and the, oh, it's just, and the flavors, of course, your sense of taste returns. Mm -hmm. and people yeah. have told me, you know, all vegetables say it's the same to me. Well, it's because the sugar has muted. It's covered up your sense of taste. Yes. It only takes about three weeks 
-hmm. for that sense of taste to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what was your part. experience with that? Yeah, no, I, exactly what you said. My, my taste buds are definitely intensifying in, in their, in their perception of things. I, things that I used to never think about eating completely dry, so to speak, uh, you know, like greens, for instance, I'll eat them completely dry now with a bunch of other veggies mixed in and, and, you know, some legumes or other, 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 um, fruit or whatever mixed into it. And I don't even think twice about it. It's just delicious. And I enjoy it. I also really enjoy for me, um, the way that my body responds now, I, I, I've healed so much. I've healed my blood sugar response. I, you know, I had metabolic dysregulation for most of my life. Uh, you know, I worked with Dr. Lori Marvis and the work that she was doing a couple of years ago and wore, uh, you know, a CGM and, and just, you know, she said, your blood sugar is beautiful. You have no, you have no metabolic dysregulation anymore. Like you are not, there's, there's no slow metabolism. She's like, actually metabolism is incredibly efficient. She's like, you eat and it, it spikes a little bit and comes right back down super gradually. She's like, it's so fun to, and it doesn't spike high. She's like, it's so fun to watch. And, you know, I was eating things that you would never think that you could eat. I was, you know, eating fruit or I was eating a, a starch at the end of my meal. And it was just this nice, fun, you know, beautiful curve. And, and she said, uh, you know, it's so interesting because you think, right. That you always are cursed with this slow metabolism and, but it's not true. Your no. body can heal. No, the human body is, it just is perfectly fine on real foods. Mm -hmm. Start putting poison in your body. Your body will hurt and it will get sick. You take those poisons out. The body just goes back to those original factory settings. And, you know, I say this all the time. If you haven't lost it in an accident and if you weren't born without it, or if you were born without it, or it's been surgically removed, when you get on clean food, it will start to work again. Whether it's a thyroid or glands or endocrine system, organs, skin, hair, fingernails, it will, it will recover. And I know the first time I showed this list to my father and probably it was a short list. It was like maybe 12 things on it of things that I had already seen in my support group get better. He said, oh, you cannot publish that. That is snake oil. That's the most ridiculous thing. Your credibility will be down the Well, I have to say I'm at a conference and I gave a presentation this morning about the common denominators of disease, all diseases in our culture today. And processed foods were at the top of the list, stress, and then cognitive impairment mm -hmm. and skill building. You have, you have to have skills to, na to navigate this very treacherous culture we live in. You guys know I have an MBA, I have a Stanford MBA from 1978, still working. But we live in unregulated capitalism, which means the corporations are allowed to do to us whatever they feel like. And that includes uh, manipulative messaging, manipulative st stimulation of the brain to create cravings, to create the addiction, you know, hyperactivate the reward pathways and the stress pathways and hypoactivate the frontal lobe. And then you come into the arc you get, it's normalizing. I think what I like about the arc is that it normalizes this lifestyle. Otherwise you would be out there by yourself, different from everybody else and your brain wouldn't tolerate that. Your brain will just drag you back. You've got to be like other people because you depend on them. Mm -hmm. Jamie, this is so exciting. It's, it is, is it like getting out of a prison? Oh, absolutely getting out of a prison, having total freedom, knowing that my body will work effortlessly. I shared a story with Chef AJ last week about, um, you know, how three years after the pandemic, almost three years after the pandemic began, uh, you know, and, you know, my lifestyle has changed, right? I went from being out in the world and out in the hospital setting now to working remotely 100% of the time. My world has changed. My non-exercise activity has gone down and changed. I have to be a lot more strategic with how I move and how I stretch in my body and how I, how I, you know, keep my body nimble, mm -hmm. but 
uh, the very, very same pair of pairs of pants that I was able to wear three years ago when I had different activities. Isn't that amazing. Without without any stretch, without any give, right? These everything fits beautifully, and it's just so it's such a joy to know that everything in my closet can stay in my closet, and I don't have to think about having different sizes of things. And oh my gosh, what if I get uh, in the future or whatever? No, just, we're secure. Yeah, we know what's going to happen in our world. It's wonderful. Yay! All right, um, I'm going to go to Kathy F. Kathy F. is an outreach manager for our training program. Everybody should know that you can train to become an advocate or a manager inside the Addiction Reset community, or we are now going to start referring to it as the Remission Optimistic Community. You can actually learn how to make this happen for somebody else. It's thrilling. Kathy F., tell us your story. Yeah, um, <laughs> it goes back to 2017 when my sister uh, had me watch the movie What the Health on Netflix. I was like, okay, because my cholesterol back then was very high, had been for years being on um, animal protein. And so I watched that and within three days, I was totally Mm -hmm. plant-based, mostly whole foods. Um, I was still, I still had a hard time getting off of the the processed foods though. I I got off the the main processed foods, mainstream processed foods in 2018. It took me another year um, or two to get off the, healthier processed foods. It's supposedly healthy processed foods. Right. And before this, I had been on, like Heather, been on every food plan that you can imagine. I've tried it all. Um, I may not have been in programs, but I tried all of the, the different food plans. And in 2020 was when I um, finally left oils and sugar behind because I was starting to have symptoms of a uterine polyp. Mm -hmm. And before I even had, and I had surgery like two months later after I found out what it was, but before even, um, surgery, it started going away because I had taken out that oil and the sugar and anything processed. And I was fully on a whole foods. And from that point, about four months later, my cycle started to be more regular. They were from seven to nine days down to five days. Wow. Eating so much. My iron levels had been low and now they're, they're higher than I've, I've, you know, I've seen them in years and years. So, um, and I don't have any menstrual cramping or anything like that. So, I mean, huge, huge. And um, I think going off the aisles, I, oils, I have to say, Chef AJ really, she had been talking about that. And I was like, okay, that's my next thing. That's my next right step. Like we talk about in the arc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I gotta let that go. And I did. And um, my health improved so much. So I was still overeating on the whole foods and I didn't know how to stop myself. Mm-hmm. And right before I found the arc, I, you know, I was in my head saying, I want to stop doing that. I was screaming at myself, to stop picking up the food to keep eat overeating all these foods. And I just couldn't. Um, mm-hmm. And when I joined the arc, that slowly stopped. Um, I was able to get control of how much I ate. Um, I did do the food rotation because it it seems like if I don't, and I know not everybody does this, if I don't weigh my foods, my brain says, oh, you didn't get enough. Oh, (laughs) right. Possibly I have not had enough. So you need to eat a little bit more and then a little bit more. And then it goes downhill from there. So, okay. oh, how smart to see that. That's a great perception. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, now you can tell the voice of the addiction versus the voice of your 
frontal lobe, which is rational and yay. Yep. So what do you think it was about the arc that created this ability to actually start stop the volume eating slowly? I think it was just having support and caring people in my life, giving me feedback of you're, you're doing okay. You are okay as a person. Yes. Um, and, and just talking about every day, I can check in, in the arc every day and you show up no matter how you show up. It does not matter. You, you are loved and cared for no matter what. And you can say how your day is going you're supported. And like Heather said, you know, there's so many great suggestions and things that work um, or just try, we call it totters yeah. in the arc. And um, yeah, it, it, and it's, it, and finally I got to food rotation like a year ago on January 1st, my body was like, you are taking your next right step today. You're going to start food rotation. And I was like, okay, okay. So um, if you were to put your finger on your single favorite benefit, what would rise to the top? My confidence level. Mm -hmm. I have never been confident, very confident in my life. And I am the most confident I am, have ever been in my life. And I know it'll slowly get better because in this community, you're just loved and supported and you know, told that you are fabulous just as you are. And, and that's exactly what I needed because I never had that in my life before. Do you feel like being in the ARC has changed your opinion about yourself and who you are? Oh, absolutely. I'm not degrading myself. I'm not, I know that that's all the, either the addiction or old mindsets, mindsets from my mother. I have so many, you know, so many of those. <laughs> yep. yes. I'm like, leave too. me alone. <laughs> yeah, that voice in the head. So I'm going to go around the room one more because you mentioned something that I feel like is a pillar of the arc, which is totters. Mm -hmm. T-O-T-T-E-R-S stands for try observe, talk, tweak, enjoy repeating slowly. And to me, the reason why this is uh, such, a, such an important part of the arc is that we live in a very, very sick culture. And this sick culture, this unregulated capitalism thrives on giving us bad habits that create profits for, for businesses, business profits. And so we have a lot of new habits to develop. We're going to break old, harmful, painful habits and slowly replace them with new habits. And how do you know which habits to, to get into? What, what is the best thing for you? And how is it going to work in your life? And this is not something that anybody else can know for you. That's all great. That all sounds terrific on the one hand. On the other hand, all of us have been in so many damaging diet programs, weight loss programs, eating disorder programs that could never possibly have worked. They were ill-conceived. They were broken before they even started. And yet, when they didn't work, you think the owners of those programs took responsibility? Oh, no. They blamed us. They blamed us, you're not trying hard enough, you don't have enough willpower, well, we gotta get those childhood issues, blah, blah, blah. So we are afraid to try things. And in the arc, I think we have taken away that fear because people talk of it, that, that try and then the observe. The observe piece is how did I like the way it turned out? Did it work for me? Or did I not like the way it turned out? And I think I won't do it again, or I'll do it differently. So the reason, then I think the third reason is that this is so important, this concept, is because people are reluctant to try a new program because they've been chastised, chastised, let's say it, gaslighted, 
psychologically abused about whether it was their fault or the program's fault. And um, no, I mean, they have trying associated with trauma. Now, I just, I just want to, I'm going to go around the room and ask one more time. Have you ever, do you feel like there is any pathway to failure in the ARC? Like if somebody comes in and they just start listening with ARC broadcasts 15 to 17 hours live on Zoom every day, 365 days a year, we have lots of different kinds of programs where you have check-in chats where you can just come and say how you are. We have programs like Textbook Talk where we talk about the textbook. Here's the, the textbook and processed food addiction. Um, we have all kinds of great programs around the clock. So it's not like it turns off during the night. No, there are blocks of programming with an hour or two break in between them. So anytime, day or night, you can eat, you can come in 15 to 17 hours a day and you can check in. You can find a live trained person on the screen. We do our own training. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you will find a person who understands you, who's been where you've been perhaps, who's going to just cherish you and treat you with deep compassion because we know the science and we know what those corporations did to us. So there is no path to failure. There is no path to failure in the arc, but I think that's a hard concept to understand. So I'm going to go around and, and ask each of our guests, what does that mean? There's no path to failure in the arc. What does that mean for you? What did that free you up to do? Brenda, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think that frees us up to leaning in you know, to be open to all that the ARC has to offer. You know, it's not a traditional weight loss program. And a lot of people, I think, expect that when they first come in. But, you know, I, I often talk to my members about what you say, Joan, which is, you know, that the food is like 20% and the other 80% is what we have going on up here. And that is where the ARC really shines. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think when people fail, quote unquote, it's that they're not open, that, you know, that they're not leaning into all that the ARC has to offer. You know, um, the addiction voice that wants us to be isolated and alone, you know, and the ARC is the opposite of that. We have a tremendous community of just mm -hmm. beautiful human beings, you know, and the ARC is not you or me or Heather or Kathy or Jamie. It's all of us. And yes. it's just an amazing community. That was the first thing that came to my mind when you asked Heather what her favorite thing was. And she said community. It was the first thing I thought of as well. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think when people hear, you know, that Kathy weighs and measures, oh, no, I, I can't weigh and measure, you know, that's not for that program isn't for me. You know, one, one thing that's so unique about the ARC is that, you know, we accept all diets, all ways of eating without judgment. You know, not everybody is whole food plant based, not everybody weighs and measures, you know, what works for one person might be triggering for another. And that's a non issue for us, you know, because yeah. we do accept all ways of eating, yeah. you know, so I think the biggest thing is just, again, leaning in and opening yourself up to what the arc has to offer. Yeah, it's that's really going to when you when you know you're not going to fail when you can just try out anything you want, try out a pod or a specialty pod, or yes. try it, listening to the daily podcast, or try reading the newsletter, try going into the Arc Recent Resource Center and doing the activities there. Try watching the videos. Yeah. You get to choose what you like and don't like. I think that's the other that kind of goes hand in glove with the totters. There are lots of things to try out. Yes. You can, you can do a very thorough job and then a confident job of saying, you know what? I like self, self calming using this technique because I got to try out 10 other techniques really easily. And this is the one that really works for me. So you're yeah. successful. I think that's the other thing that, that opens the door to trying things out. 
is that ultimately you're quite successful, less pain, more happiness. Heather, how does how does this work for you? There's no path to failure in the arc. There's failure does not exist in the arc. This is an excellent question. Um, I would have to say, I for me, I I was thinking back of when I joined and what happened, and there were moments where I did want to quit, and I'll tell you why I did. It's because initially it was all about weight loss. Mm -hmm. And that's because I had been conditioned to believe that when you're a certain weight or you're losing weight, that's success. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't happening as fast or as quickly as I wanted to. So I remember going to you and I was like, I'm not losing enough weight. I only you know, lost such a, such a pounds. And then you came back with questions like, okay, are your clothes fitting better? I said, yes. You, how are you feeling? Are you feeling better overall, physically, mentally, emotionally? And I thought about it and I sat down and made a list. I said, yeah, my depression is better. My anxiety is better. My health issues are better. And it just changed my mindset and put me on that path. And if we had come in with a closed mind, having these expectations that are unrealistic, and the expectations of what the diet industry taught us to have, that you need to lose X amount of pounds in 30 days, yeah. then we might be basically tripping ourselves up. But if we come in and embrace, because what we do in the ARC is based on science, clear-cut research, you always present it that way, Joan, and you always have the proof and evidence to back it up. If we're coming in with an open mind, and drop these unrealistic expectations that we have and be open to this different way that has worked for hundreds of people, then we're going to be successful. Uh, yeah. When you know the mechanisms, when you know that being among kind people is relaxing, and when you're among kind people, you also lose the self-blame when you're among kind people, you internalize self-kindness and then you don't want to hurt yourself anymore. Oh no, that would hurt. And, I, and, and I'm and i a kind person and I'm kind to myself, so I wouldn't do that. It's a really interesting source of control over food, that internalized kindness. Thank you, Heather. Yep. You have just been a star of the arc and I appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, Jamie, what did, how did you encounter this idea that there's no pathway to failure in the arc? Well, a lot of it is because of what we learn in the arc, which is that, you know, failure is feedback and that's, that's a great lesson in recovery in general. Um, it's not failure. It's only feedback, right? So, so what, <laughs> one of the ways that I love thinking about the arc is, you know, and I, and Joan, you say this a lot, you know, we, we didn't fail. We just found ways that, that didn't work for us. And we're going to find new ways. And that's that in it, in itself, knowing that something doesn't work for us through that tottering process you talked about, that's success. That's, that's yes. not a failure at all. Yes. That's success. Yes. So the other thing that we do, you know, and I would say the only way someone could fail in the arc, and I don't think any of us that are in do because the only way we could fail is if we don't take advantage of the opportunities presented to us, of the resources available to us, of the tools, of the community, of the opportunities for connection, uh, and to find your your tribe within the tribe. Yeah. Um, you know, it just it's it's not even just listening, right? Even just listening um, that that's that's success, right? Because we're we're putting ourselves around people who feel like we we get them and they get us. Yes. Yes. So I think that's another, you're touching on another really, really big piece of it. It's easy to take advantage of the arc. You don't have to get dressed. <laughs> you don't have to turn on your camera. You don't have to turn on your mic. You can, anywhere you can reach the internet, you can join um, a chat or get on um, private messenger and leave messages for your friends and your private messenger groups. So, you know, sometimes people just run out of time and then they then they can't access recovery 
or resources. But the thing about the arc is you can play it in the background like a radio. You know, it, it's I, when I say to people, it doesn't require any time. They're like, oh, sure. No, I can't do this. I, I, I don't have time to make such a big commitment right now. No, no, no. You can be doing your life full blast and just playing it in the car or playing it in the, you know, you've got your earphones on, you're playing it while you're vacuuming or gardening or taking care of the kids or uh, walking the dog or whatever. So it just, it's just background, but it works. Brains take in messaging, store it. And then when they're cued by a similar situation, they release that messaging again inside the brain as thoughts. So if you're surrounding yourself with kindness and science and understanding and compassion, that's the messaging that's going to be playing inside your head. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I say, if you can watch TV, you can succeed in the arc. Kathy, do you think that's true? How do you experience this? Just there's, if there's, I mean, I don't, we can't say, oh, we're going to guarantee your success, but we can guarantee that you won't fail. Yeah, three things come up for me. Like you said, you know, we're accepted as we are. <laughs> Whether we're dressed for Zoom or not, you can be on the background. However you show up is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing that comes up for me is when I first, before I signed up for the AMT training, which is the manager training, um, you, you, it said on there, we won't let you fail. Mm -hmm. And that gave me the confidence to go forward. And, you know, just the manager training in itself helped me move forward. Um, even faster. Uh, I was looking at all the resources, um, to, as part of my training and there was just no way I did not feel like I was going to fail and the other thing that comes up for me is you you're saying of you have all the time in the world that opens up a space so we can explore and feel like we can do all the things to yeah. be able to figure out how we want to design our recovery yeah yeah Stress is the killer. I mean, if you're in a program and you are you're having a negative reaction to it, mad, sad, afraid, ashamed, guilty, lonely, resentful, judgmental, it might not be the right program. Although I know sometimes people get upset in, in the art because they're they're the art just being in a new program is triggering memories of other programs. And so you you could be upset, but the art will just be there with you while you go through it. All right, you guys, you know what? I didn't leave any time for questions. I don't know if we have any. Yes, we do. So would you mind answering some? Oh, please. Okay. Thank you so much. And we appreciate so much that your approach is like so many of the other food addiction groups. It's like, if you're not willing to only eat animal products and weigh and measure your food, they don't take you. So I really love right. that you're so inclusive and flexible on both of those things, which is why oh, you're pretty yeah. much the only one that I will recommend <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> so a few questions have been sent in in advance. And the first one is from Carol. If you're Treating processed food addiction, why is oil allowed on food plans? Oil is a highly processed food. Why not recommend whole food fats like nuts, seeds, and avocado instead? So this is a super excellent question. And it's one that we leave up to our members because, for example, a lot of members can't tolerate nuts. And it's not a biochemical issue. It's an addiction issue. They get started and they can't stop. Or maybe they have this nice weight loss going on and then they add in nuts and suddenly the weight loss just stops. And they're saying, but I'm only having a handful. Well, maybe for your bio system, that's enough to stop the weight loss. So what we, we have a rotation system where people try. Um, so they'll make the, maybe they have five or seven different kinds of fat. They want to try, they want to try avocado. They want to try nuts. They want to try seeds. Um, they want to try coconut and they want to try all of cold pressed olive oil 
and maybe something else. Well, they just try this and they notice on the days when they're using the olive oil that they're binging. Well, then, it, then that for that person, olive oil is not working. They notice that on the days when they have nuts, that they feel a little brain foggy. Um, some nuts have tryptophan in them, which converts to serotonin. So maybe they feel a little foggy or they feel a little craving because they're, maybe their serotonin has been riled up. And so what we do is we empower individuals. We have five different videos. Uh, we have a plant-based protein rotation, fruit rotation, vegetable rotation, starch rotation, and fat rotation. So people can, can be really, really confident about their decisions. We've, we've heard several stories about how eliminating the fat uh, stopped cravings and overeating. So that's so cool. We have a tremendous amount of respect for our members. They can read their responses. We give them some education about the broad range of allergies. Um, it can be a mental, emotional, physical, behavioral reaction that uh, allergies to foods take a lot of different forms. So we're aware, like if you get a tad of brain fog and it's Tuesday and every Tuesday you've got brain fog, well, you just look down the short list of foods that you eat on Tuesdays and you'll be able to, you'll have your likely suspects there. Yeah, Chef AJ, does that sound okay? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, here's a question from Alyssa. And I think other people have this problem too. I have a question for Dr. Joan Iflin. Do you have any tips on how to kick a habit of using monk fruit extract and stevia extract? I mostly add it to my decaf tea and coffee throughout the day, but find myself craving that sweet taste after meals. I'm trying to transition to fruit to sweeten things, but I'm having trouble with intense sweet cravings. Yeah, it's it doesn't make... Um, well, I mean, artificial sweeteners are can be neuro aggressive. They can be implicated in neuro um, degeneration, nerve, you know, nerve frazzling. Artificial sweeteners, neurotoxin—that's the word I'm looking for. Ne artificial sweeteners. So the brain is not does not do very well with concentrated sweeteners. So when the when you get a concentrated sweet taste in your mouth, your whole system goes on red hot alert. Oh my gosh, so much sugar is coming. Get ready, pancreas, start pumping out that insulin. And then your blood sugar drops because there's no sugar coming. So artificial sweeteners do this horrible thing, which is they disassociate incoming sugar from your body's response. So artificial treat, uh, sweeteners train your pancreas not to respond to sweet tastes. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you do eat something sweet and then you've got your, then your blood glucose is through the roof and your, your pancreas isn't putting out insulin. So any kind of a concentrated sweet taste. And of course, as your, um, your caller is absolutely correct, it's kicking up the dopamine, serotonin, endocannabinoid, uh, opiate pathways in the brain, mostly dopamine from sweet tastes. So yes, you're getting a dopamine high followed by a crash. And yes, you do get cravings in the crash. So how do you get off of it? Um, well, I can tell her how we get off of it in the arc, which is we start to associate the pain with it. So the pain is, is that she's using it all throughout the day and then it will not leave her alone. It's knock, knock, knocking on the door. Hello, hello, I want some more. When she wants to be done with it, it's not done with her. That's the that's the misery, the terror, the the horror of addiction. Thank you so much. Uh, this is from Linda. A lot of people that grew up, I think, in the 60s, 50s ha have this problem. She says, I grew up being taught that you need to clean your plate. You don't waste money. You don't throw away food. I find myself forcing myself to continue to eat even when I feel disgustingly full and disgusted mm -hmm. and angry with myself or eating food that started to go bad. 
How do I get myself out of that? Okay, so in the arc, you would be surrounded by people who are not doing that. So there's a part of the brain, it's the most powerful part of the brain, according to some researchers, which is the conformance drive, the drive to belong, the urge to copy, to imitate, to mimic. Humans have that. It's a very, very powerful part of the brain. We, we are safe when we're surrounded by other people and we're vulnerable. We're, we're vulnerable when we're not. So our brain drags us into copying other people as a way of having them accept us and protect us. So in the art, nobody is doing that behavior. Nobody's talking about it. You're not seeing it. So your brain naturally has you stop. He says, oh, nobody else is doing that. Well, well then we're not going to do it either. It's the easiest way to make behavior change ever on the planet. You just show up. You're listening to that 15 to 17 hours a day. Now you're not required to come to anything. So this is something that you just flip on, like you flip on the radio or you flip on the TV and it then replaces all the negative messaging that's coming out of commercial radio and TV. So that's how you get something like that to stop. And also affirmations. You know, I easily stop doing whatever it is that you want to stop doing. And you say that enough time in your brain to, and your brain just absorbs that messaging. Oh, oh, we're stopping that. Oh, we stopped that. We already stopped it. Oh, I didn't. I, I missed that. Okay, we're stopping that. And it's just, that's the way the brain works. It believes whatever it's told. Thank you. And here's a question from Lynn about how do you get out of the mindset to reward yourself with bad food after you've lost weight? Uh huh. This is really good. So the arc has many, many activities. I'm just I'm shocked over and again at how many things you can do to get that dopamine, serotonin, cannabinoid, opioid rush. And when you're doing it in these really safe ways, you get the high, but then it stays there. It's not like you're high for for twelve seconds and then you crash. And then you're in the pits and, and you're just, you're desperate to get out of the pit. No, 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 not that kind of an elevated dopamine. So Qigong and meditation and visualization, socializing, being in community, singing, dancing, movement, uh, walking, um, all of those um, breath work. I discovered breath work last year, uh, actually the year before last. Uh, All of those things create a nice, nice dopamine high that stays with you for eight or nine hours. And when you are the chemical engineer releasing the chemicals in your body, which we train our people in doing, then you don't need to use a, a toxic, destructive um food like substance to get that dopamine high great thank you this is from a different linda and it's uh the question is is what can i do to stop eating to the point of uncomfortable fullness and beyond and you know the thing is is she this person doesn't appear to be overweight based on the metrics she sends She's saying this applies to healthy food as well as junk food, but yeah. without knowing her diet, because I don't know if you have experienced this, Dr. Ifland, but sometimes people only eat so low calorie that they always overeat because they're afraid to include anything but like, say, vegetables. I've seen that with people. Mm. So the overeating of clean food and, or, or processed food, just the overeating To me, I've seen evidence that when the stomach stretches, it releases serotonin and that serotonin does travel to the brain and attach to serotonin receptors. That's a really nice high. So just like we were talking about with the dopamine, you just wanna find something else, something different that will create that serotonin high. Community will create that high. Doing, oh, this is another great one. Two more great ones I just thought of. Uh, Being of service to somebody else, that creates a high. Um, And gratitude. 
you just, if ever you start to get a craving or you're feeling down, you just start touching things around you and saying that you're grateful. I'm grateful for my, this tabletop. I'm grateful for this cell phone. I'm grateful for my power cord. I'm grateful for this lamp. I'm grateful for my laptop. I'm grateful for this food container. I'm grateful for my car keys. You know, just, it's amazing what that will do for your brain and your mood. Nice. Thank you. I've got one more question and uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, this is from Dana. She says, Dr. Iflin, I've been whole food plant-based without sugar, oil, or salt for five years. I'm five, six female. My weight's between 118 and 122. Before becoming plant-based, I was addicted to sugar. When I transitioned, I started eating dates and have been addicted to them. I don't mm. know if they're bad for me, but it does not feel good to know I have an addiction. Any suggestions you have would be appreciated. Yeah, dates are way too sweet for me. Like dates cannot be in my house. Any high sugar fruit. Uh, this is, I am think, I'm pretty sure a permanent sensitivity. Um, bananas cannot be in my house. Cherries, grapes, guava, mango, even pineapple cannot be in my house. I recently experimented with watermelon back in my house and that was okay. That was fine. I wanted it because it's uh, got magnesium in it. So um, you just you just transferred the addiction. You just transferred it, and it's so easy to do. So in the arc, we are we are actively calming those hyperactive, hyperreactive reward centers, the addict, the part of the brain that gets addicted, because. Um, when I say hyperactive, what's going on? The brain is flooding with craving neurotransmitters and those nasty little craving neurotransmitters can walk right over to your behavior center. It's a, called a locomotion center and it can grab onto those receptors there. And those neurotransmitters have the power to control your behavior. And there's so much craving neurotransmitter in your brain that your frontal lobe is not getting any stimulation and it cannot put on brakes for you. So you, you start doing what I call the zombie walk. I'm going to get this, but the frontal lobe is screaming, no, 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 you don't do that. But you're still walking. You're still moving towards it. It's still getting in your mouth. That is because the addicted brain cells have put up so much craving neurotransmitters that they won the war for control of your behavior. And now the cravings have control of your behavior and your frontal lobe lost, lost that battle, lost that round. Well, dates are just, they're so sweet and they're so intensively sweet that they could, for me, they could easily trigger a, a dopamine release. So they're, they're definitely not in my house. I'm not going to say I never eat them, but uh, I almost never eat them. Okay. I, don't, I don't like the effects. I don't like the high and the crash. I don't like the cravings. Because you know what? There's another concept in uh, all drug addiction recovery, which is the gateway drug. So dates are like the gateway drug to um, sweeter things. They just get those craving neurotransmitters all riled up. And the next thing you know, you're eating something you don't want to eat. Yep. Well, I always say if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. I don't eat dates, but I use dates 20 years ago to get off of processed sugar. And so I would use them now, like, for example, if I'm making, oh, like a, like a recipe, there might be one date in the salad dressing to balance, but, but I agree, you know, hand to mouth foods and dates, but I would still argue that, you know, she seems to be at a decent weight and doesn't have health problems. I would rather see somebody eat a date than processed sugar. If, if that's the choice. But you know. she's but she's in the addiction. Right. No, I understand in her case, but 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 I still feel like she's she's still moving in the right direction. But of course, but thank yes. you so much. And uh, but I agree that people need to experiment. Like, I love that you don't have these hard rules for people. You let them use their own body as an experiment. And so the viewers are saying thank you to all the ladies who shed their story. And they're so happy for you and congratulate you on your recovery. So thank sure. you so much for for what you offer. I really thank you. Chef and, and I look forward, Dr. Iflin, Food to addiction Fridays. Yeah. 
have food. I love if people are saying they love the name food. Thank goodness this is Friday because it would be very okay. confusing if it wasn't. <laughs> but Food Addiction Friday, we look forward to you. And again, always feel free to have guests or even if you ever want to come on by yourself. I know you do so many wonderful PowerPoint presentations. We just love your expertise on this subject. And All right. Connection. Thanks so much, ladies. Thanks so much, Dr. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> And thanks Bye-bye. all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 9 a.m. tomorrow when my guest is celebrity fitness guru, John Pierre. Take care, everyone.